Hi there, how's your week been? I've got a really, really good episode for you today. If I do say so myself, it's been a while in the making. First of all, I'll explain who the guest is. It's Joy Matashi. She is, she's hilarious. She's a hair architect, like I've given her that name. She studied architecture, but she's mostly known for hair. She's self-taught. You can catch her on Instagram at Joy Darling in it, um, doing lives on how to do Senegalese twists. She's got a lot of personality. She's a real glossy ace down, I found out. Like when you check out the list of products in the products mentioned section, you'll see I think there's at least eight Glossier products in there. And no, this episode is not sponsored by Glossier, but it probably should be. What I need to tell you is actually we recorded it on, gosh, a couple of months ago. It was before lockdown started here in the UK, but it was at the time when the toilet paper was selling out everywhere. I remember I picked Joy up from the station. We couldn't find hand soap. Like it was when everyone went crazy. So Joy came to stay for the night. We watched some documentaries. We had a great time. And the next day we recorded this episode. We discussed Joy's influences as well as her skincare, obviously. We talk about borrowing from your sister your sister stealing your products and it turns out that while joy stayed she took a liking to some of the products in my bathroom um, including the peter thomas roth 24 karat gold mask uh, but that's fine that's what beauty is about it's about sharing things and that's what this show is about so i really hope you enjoy this episode in fact i guarantee you will all information about the products mentioned the books mentioned you'll find everything in the show notes so let's get on with it. Yeah, please do this for the trailer, by the way. Recording <laughs> <laughs> audio. Oh, thank you. There's some vintage ones my phone got me. Joy Matashi. Is that correct? Yes, Joy Matashi. Joy Matashi. That's such a great... Strong, it means strong young man in like... My Is dad. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A strong young boy, apparently. Okay. If anyone already knows me through this show, it's like I'm super nosy. So we're going to talk about growing up, influences, but also let's start with like your daily routine because yeah. I met you a few months ago and I'm always like, your skin yeah, a few is just... months ago? I think so. Wow. Was it November? Before Christmas. Oh my gosh, I thought that was in January. Oh, well, maybe it wasn't. Yeah, no, it wasn't because we were supposed to meet. No. I was in Nigeria in January, so it was definitely last right, year. Right, okay. Yeah. Wow, we've known each other for six months. Oh, shoot. Ooh, four months. <laughs> four months. <laughs> yeah. I always picked up on like, your amazing skin and stuff. So I'm oh, like, thank you. let me know exactly what you do from the minute you put your foot out of the bed. Oh, we thank God. Um, well, when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> thank God. And then I, you know, go into the bathroom, which is good to do. Um, uh, I've recently, I've been using a lot of Glossier, I think. Okay. I think. You like the stretch concealer, right? I love their stretch concealer. Literally. When I, I think when I discovered their stretch concealer, I stopped using everything else because I'm a very, when it comes to makeup in the morning, mm, I'm mm. super simple. I like mm -hmm. it being really quick. I yeah. call it, me and my friends call it tap, tap makeup. We love tap, okay. tap makeup. If it doesn't tap, tap and then spread, we don't want it. Like, <laughs> you know, and the concealer is like a tap, tap. Apart. So you're not fussed with brushes, beauty blenders? Not, no, not necessarily. Right. If I'm doing a beat, okay. which is another, I guess, term. Yeah. Um, I'll probably, the, the, the furthest I'd go is to setting with like a loose powder with a, right. with a beauty blender. Okay. And then brushing it off with another brush. Mm -hmm. um, and then doing the eyeshadow. I, I, I really, I'm a skin girl. And I feel like right. when I accepted I was a skin girl, I just stopped caring about everything else. Really and truly. Right. I just want myself to look like myself. Yeah. When I first started getting into like, you know, makeup, it was the um, Bare Minerals Beauty Pack. Yeah, like yeah, Like the 50 yeah. pound beauty pack. It came with like, so did it include powder and stuff? It included a, the powder, the brush, a highlighter, a bronzer. Okay. And a bronzer, yeah. It's like, it was literally like, 50, like I remember that being That's the first right. thing I ever bought. Yeah. And I remember when I took a picture of myself in the garden, my skin looked amazing. Right. And I felt like ever, that was the, the, almost the staple point of how I wanted my makeup to look in future. Yeah, and because yeah, they kind yeah. of said, you know, these are the mineral powders good for your skin. Mm. You can sleep with your makeup on. So I used to always sleep with my makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> um to so my mum's like, you know, despair like, look at your pillow. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like, no, but I can sleep with my makeup on. It's like, no, you should really wash your face. Yeah. Um which I obviously ended up doing when I got yeah. into like all the other kind of um brands. That's 
I mean, yeah. So, but now I've kind of gone into the Glossier, you know, mm. train. I think mainly because of branding. Right. So you're not telling me it's because you love the product. I or love you the say, product, but right, I but it was the branding that led you in. What was it then? Do you remember the first time you saw a Glossier product? I it was it was recommended by a friend. Okay. Um, her name is Julina. Amazing, amazing woman. Um, and she was like, you should try the. She almost said it like off the whim. Oh, mm. Glossier, this amazing brand, blah, blah blah. And I was like, okay. And then I just went on their website and I just kept on following them until mm. they had a pop up in London. Yeah. Like near Bond Street. In okay. The, it was like a huge house at every floor. I think they were launching their perfume. Oh, you, because they had the room that literally smelt of the perfume, exactly, didn't they? Like, yeah. really intense. I couldn't, I couldn't smell it in the room, but when I put it on myself and I left, that's when I smelt it. Okay. I didn't buy anything that day. Right. I remember not buying anything that day. But then I went to LA and then I went and walked into the shop yeah. um, on the boulevard and I got mm -hmm. something there. But, yeah. So what was the first product you bought? The cleansing. The, the milky jelly the cleanser. milky jelly cleanser. Right. Um, I was using, cause I'm, I mean, I think if, if I buy something, I want it to do more than one thing. And so they said that it could take off your, the packaging said it would take off your, um, mm. mascara and yeah. your, <laughs> and your makeup. And because I'm skin, skin, tap, tap, I thought, okay. You hardly had any on. I hardly had, any, had anything on. So, so I was it worked like, for you. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't work, it doesn't work for, for you. A full face. No. It doesn't work for full face. I don't think a lot of brands work for full face. Boschia. No. Boschia. B-O-S-C-I-A. Yeah, I know the one. Yeah. I went into Sephora. That was the first one somebody introduced. Mm. Someone introduced that to me because I was tired of using micellar water. I was just being lazy. I was like, I just want something that will, you know, wash my face and I don't yeah. have to use like any cotton pads. Right. Or right. anything like that. Yeah. Um, so I use the Bossia yeah. and I, I still use it to this day. Okay. Yeah. So what is that? Just a... It's an oil you put on your face, right. you wet okay. it a bit, yeah. smudge it around. Yeah. But I still have to go again and wash my face. I love my face being super clean before going to bed well, now. So do you do a double cleanse? I do a double cleanse. Yeah. I think, I don't know what we were doing before a double <laughs> cleanse because... The thought of washing all my makeup off with a gel cleanser or like something. What was I doing? Yeah. I wasn't even doing that twice. So, you yeah. know, you would come home, wash your makeup yeah. off, maybe apply a separate one for eyes if yeah. you've got a waterproof yeah. on. And I can't remember when I started double cleansing, but it's it's now like there's no way if I've got a full face of makeup on, no I'm coming thing. home, I'm doing the oil, I'm going to rub it in. So I start to feel the grains of the mascara come off yeah. and Definitely. everything. Then get like maybe a hot flannel or if it's a wash off one, like warm water. And then I use my water, my, my gel cleanser yeah. and then I'm clean. Yeah, definitely. But what? All that time we were just doing like a... We were smearing ourselves with like a simple makeup remover. Mm. It was Caroline Hirons, I think, that really got me thinking about it. I think I'd already started, but she was like, the telltale sign is when you get a... I think she said something like, when you get a cotton pad, put some cleanser on it and go in your hairline. Still there. Your makeup is there. Still there. And that's why you get like those little pimples or something. So I was like, yeah, I'm... To say that I'm a beauty journalist and I love makeup and I'm not cleansing properly it's like it's not good no first book in sam first thing in sam vine's book actually about cleansing. oh really yeah, yeah. so um, joy was looking through my little library of um books yesterday yeah like 1 a.m <laughs> and <laughs> she found Instagram. a book about makeup artist sam fine and we were just talking about how even back then it was like essential the prep yeah so let's say if it's a day for you when you're not wearing makeup like mm -hmm. what are you doing with your face when you get up um, it's still a double cleanse. I'll probably so double cleanse it in the morning as well. Oh, it's, it's double. Just to clarify, double yeah. cleanse is when you clean your face twice. <laughs> <laughs> Usually with an oil followed by a a foaming. Okay, no, no, a foam no. type. It's just single cleanse then. Single cleanse. <laughs> okay, so you're saying you use the same product twice? Okay, no. What I'm saying <laughs> is that if I just to clarify, if I have makeup on, I like you know I go in a bit more. Yeah. So I'll like. Do the oil cleanse and I'll do like then, a, yeah. a gel cleanse yeah. after. But if, in, if I'm in, in, if the it, morning, in the morning, it's just a gel cleanse. Right. Then I go straight to my serums. Okay. What serum? serum? Okay. <laughs> Which one are you using right now? Right now. So I was using the, um, so I was using the hyaluronic from The Ordinary. Right. Um, and uh, 
the but if I if I can't say I'm getting ready and I can't find the hyaluronic because it's somewhere lost in my palm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. whatever, I'll use the equivalent in the glossy package. Oh right. I can't, I can't so you've got have you got a few of their serums? I've got the I love hyaluronic. Super Pure. Uh, is that the Super Pure? No, one? that's the niacinamide one. It's amazing, but it's they still haven't restocked it. Oh, yeah, Since November, that, yeah. it's a joke. I actually did I a whole even, bit on it last week on YouTube. So you haven't even tried it yet because you don't have it's it. Amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's actually amazing. Because I've, yes. I've heard it's the only glossy product I've called amazing so far. So that. So what's the benefits of that one? What it is, I don't know if you're prone to blemishes, but often when you have a blemish, there's also what comes with it, which is like more redness in your skin, mm. and obviously a more bumpy texture, mm-hmm. and. I got it as a, just, it was a freebie at an event. And one day I used it because I couldn't find my hyal- my usual hyaluronic acid yeah. serum. I was looking around. I was like, let me try this stuff. And I think I used it for a few days. I was like, oh my God, I can feel the difference. Does it level your skin? Yeah, that's oh. it. it. And the redness, like it was, it was gone. Amazing. So I used it religiously every day. So when it ran out, I was like, I'm, I'm happy to buy this. Continually. Yeah, nice. and it's just not there. And it still hasn't been restocked. It's £24, maybe. <laughs> Which, so, it's definitely double anything you'll pay for, for the ordinary. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind, because my sister was using Kiehl's for a while. Oh, right. So that's the next level That's the up. next level Yeah, up. yeah, and yeah. I would not buy, I wouldn't buy Kiehl's. I'm, I'm, mm. a, I'm, a, I'm a product snatcher. Meaning that so I you have a, a line <laughs> you won't go over. Yeah. Right. So, but I will go over my bedroom into her bathroom and use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the product snatcher that's me yeah yeah okay i'll okay. be the worst roommate okay okay no that's if we're, that's okay if and you've been staying you. in my house the past the past okay, night i did so. use your oil <laughs> Which and oil? i did use your face mask <laughs> <laughs> the gold Which one ones? i Which? saw i saw a gold face mask and i was like oh the peter thomas ross <laughs> I, I appreciate the, gold... the honesty yeah sorry um, She's gold- holding my hand now. <laughs> Sorry, baby. The product stash. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, this is the great thing about like staying in beauty bloggers' houses. It's like they got everything everywhere." No, no, no. The good, the good shit's in. I'm like, she said the good issues in her bathroom, yeah. but she got some good stuff in her guest bathroom as well. Okay, you know, cool. Help yourself. That's what it's there for. It don't, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Help yourself. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, let's go back, back, back to yes. your mornings. Like, I want to know when you wow. haven't got the ordinary serum, what are you using? It is when I'm not using the ordinary serum. I'm just okay. Do you know what I'm using? I'm using bio oil, <laughs> mineral oil, basically. Let me tell you something. I wish I, I have. You might as well I, put baby oil on you your face. You know what? Yeah, I put it on my neck. Right. Because I have. I struggled so much with hyperpigmentation. Right, okay. I've heard it does help with that and like it stretch marks. It really, stuff. really does. Like, I remember I was using that almost like I would use a little bit and I would kind of mm. just like massage it in like I'm giving mm. myself a, a cute body massage. This is when mm. I'm really desperate, guys. I don't use this like every single day. <laughs> but like, if I really feel tightness and if I can't be bothered to like, you know, really yeah. search for something I need to go, I'll yeah, see the yeah, bite yeah. oil and I'll just like we'll massage it into my skin and then okay. I'll get like a, a, a moisturizer and put it over. Mm-hmm. Moisturizer I generally use. I used to use the quarterly, the pink sorbet. Oh, right. Okay. Um, when I'm trying to find like a sealant that's not too like heavy. Okay. Uh, but recently I've been using the priming moisturizer from Glossier. Okay. Or the rich moisturizer, which from I'll Glossier use in the as evening well. from right. Glossier. Okay. Um, any other one? Um, like three, two to three times a week, I'll use the sensitive scrub from Cordily. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Cordily. Cordily. Um, I'll use that one. Um, and when I was, yeah, when I didn't have a lot of budget, I used literally just use shea butter and mm. simple. Mm. And I had really bad skin. skin Cause skin shea butter is like healing, but that's because mm, I didn't but know Yeah, my, but it's also blocking. Do you know what? Yeah. But I had no idea that I had dry skin. Right. And shea butter really helped. Mm. Yeah, of course. Almost. It will help with the hydration side for sure. I didn't know that. So I, I feel like in my DIY, in my DIY practice when it comes to skin, mm. I've learned a lot about my skin. Mm. I didn't know. Like I thought I was overly oily, but I didn't know that I was so did I. sebum because of the thingy majiggy. And then <laughs> new, new job. No, of it's true. I spoke <laughs> about it on my last video because I was like, I think when you are black or mixed, you tend to think I've got, 
you you think you've got oily skin mm. and you're gonna have it for life and I think that's where the whole black don't crack comes from because we cool. have naturally more oil. Sam but I think said that as well. Did he? He did, yeah. But you go through <laughs> certain stages. And I was like, you know what? No, I think it's more of the oily T zone, the classic. And then maybe I'm like dry around here. Mm -hmm. And so then you're like, if you get blemishes, they look 10 times worse if you have dry skin. Interesting. Because the redness is more pronounced. The roughness is more pronounced. Yeah. So you have to focus on the hydration side, but also getting rid of the blemishes as well. So do you think white people need to focus more on hydrating themselves than all these other... Why do you say why do you say white Sorry, people? I, this is where my this is where my my head bounced. Yeah. Because Sam Fine was saying the makeup artist, this mm -hmm. is the book. He was saying that obviously um, we're we we look a lot more youthful in our yeah in our yeah it's like a, our, our skin is producing like natural oils yeah and we're overly oily in the yeah. T zone yeah so it kind of us us becoming mm -hmm. looking a bit younger mm -hmm. whereas so that when we're so older it kind of sits so like do you think hydration is the key to youthfulness? And like, oh you know, yeah, I think so. You know, and you know what? Like... Even if it's just appearance for appearance's sake, when you apply a layer of moisture to something, I think it's automatically going to look smoother. Just you know, me. we have texture in our skin. Yeah, I get super stressed out when I've got a breakout because the minute I put on something mattifying, it is exaggerated. Yeah. So. I had really bad acne when I was younger. Me too. Yeah. Me too. And then it just, I literally woke up and it was gone. I can't even like... No, I mine's can't. continued all my life, on and off. Interesting. Hormones, one yeah. way. Stress, another way. Eating lots of dairy, another way. Yeah. But it's funny because my mum's white and she, she's got good skin. Mm. But I think that's because... She has always taken good care of, care of it. She wouldn't, she wouldn't wake up and not moisturize. She no, moisturize. no. But I have to nag her incessantly about wearing SPF. I'm just like, please don't embarrass me. Yeah. Like looking like a lobster on holiday. Yeah. It's like, it's not good. Do you wear SPF, Joy? I do. I wear SPF. Like I'll have it on the, on my, on my, um, <laughs> So I use the Body Shop, the pink one. Okay, yeah. That was, I think a few people like that one, actually. I forgot what it's called. 30? Is it, is it, oh, I thought it might be 50. There was 51, yeah. but they've, they've, taken okay. it, they've taken it off stock. And we, oh, I right. don't know. My sister used to use that one. She was wondering, like, why did that take mm. off? Nobody really knows why. Mm. Um, so I use that on my T and my cheeks. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I used to rely on my primer for SPF, which oh, is like a nice... Primer's all the way under, underneath. Yeah, it's an, yeah, I used to rely on that, but not anymore. Okay. Yeah. Another, another, um, oh, the thing is, I'm, I should actually know this. So Glossier have, Glossier, sorry. They have, <laughs> this is not sponsored by Glossier. This is not sponsored by Glossier, but you can hit me up if you would <laughs> yeah. like to like, send me some Linda's eye. But um, Glossier, they have a serum, mm -hmm. which you put on your skin, which is like a natural highlighter. It's like a, and this is like a highlighter, kind of highlighter -y kind of serum. It's like an so a serum, cake. that's a highlighter. Is, is it serum or cream? You're not talking about Future G. Future G. Oh, you try that. That's like their newest one. I love Future G. I've I heard it's really good love for. G. It's more about the appearance of your skin. It's not necessarily maybe doing much for your skin. It doesn't do anything for your skin, but it's right. it's a cute dewy highlighter. Right. And I, you're supposed to put it in a points of a point uh, where of you want to highlight. Where I, yeah. I put all over. Okay. Yeah. I need to try that. I think I, I think I might buy that. But before I I did that, I was on set and. Um, and I was like, how do I, how do I, I want to, I want to highlight my face, but I don't want to mm. necessarily put like a ton of makeup on. Mm. And she was like, just literally use some lip gloss and put it at the highest yeah. point of your face. Yeah. And so when I'm on the bus, sometimes I get my like mirror <laughs> and I'll, I'll put lip gloss on my lips yeah. and I'll just put it and I'll just tap on my cheeks and my nose and mm. my eyes, you know, the highest point. My, my, my youngest sister has been doing that her whole life. She's mm. always maybe, you know, like the little pots of Vaseline, I think it is. Oh my God, yeah. Eyelids yeah, around yeah. there and yeah. I just think like it's actually done us some good, just like for moisture's sake as well, so. But yeah, I- That good mineral. I've moved away quite a bit from like powder highlighters. I don't mind stick ones that you can kind of rub. I need a cream. Really, yeah. I need a cream. I tried a new one today that a friend gave me and I'm, it's all right, it catches the light. It hasn't mm. got loads of color in it, but I'm not sure that I love it. It's like I'd rather have the look of moisture rather than color. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But hey, so that's your morning routine. Did I even give the morning routine? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, hey, hey, my child. Yeah, okay. 
But is, is there anything else that like you like to do as part of your day to get you ready to go out the door? Like, are you a tea drinker? Are you are you into meditation? Um, are you into going to the gym first thing? Um, it really, it really very. I'm trying to get myself to finish this Bible in one year study, which is not really working. I've oh, missed right. thirty days, <laughs> and it's it literally takes up twenty minutes of your morning, even right. if you listen to it. So I've literally like right. I've literally brought it down to enjoy just listen to it. You don't even have to read yeah, it. Yeah, just yeah, let it yeah. Play in the background, and I still yeah. forget. So I'm trying to get back on that. Okay. Um, but I used to go to the gym in the morning. Stop doing that. I now what I do is I literally jump out of bed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine that's like. Boom. Yeah. Like, yeah. You've got 10 minutes. Right. Do what you can. Okay. Anything okay, else okay. you can do on the bus. Right. So we're, okay. trying to, we're, trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to stop doing, we're, not, we're trying to like, you know, reel back on that. Okay. Okay. So I have no morning routine, unfortunately. Right. And is that because, so am I right in thinking that your kind of, your full time role is hair? Amongst other things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what, so if you don't have a regular routine, like just tell me a bit about what is a, is there an average day for you? Or give me an example of a day average, you had the day, last week. The day that I had last week was I was shooting last week, so okay. really it, it's either that it's either I'm doing nothing, I'm doing something intensely. Right. Okay. So um, last week we were shooting, so it's mainly emails okay. in the morning, mm-hmm. research, going out to source and buy some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, last week it was like us on like Shepherd's Bush, Berwick Street, trying to find sorry. Shepherd's Bush and Berwick Street, mm-hmm. trying to find like fabric that imitated carpet that could be hung on a on a, uh, on, a, a post, on a backdrop. Yeah, right. So it really it really does depend. So or what I'll was that like for though? Was that for a hair shoot or it was for a hair shoot? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but I I, I like textural backgrounds. I don't like necessarily like shooting on white backdrops unless I'm collaging over it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. if I can get a nice brick wall, if mm. I can get like a wooden a like wooden panel back background like that mm-hmm. could be quite nice as well. Yeah, I'm testing a lot. I don't necessarily post a lot on Instagram. That's the thing. You're not someone that I can like scroll through and see exactly what you're doing no, i feel like there's so much there's too much there's so much information online if i'm proud of what i've okay i'm proud of mm. what I'm, i've done if mm. there's a process that i really would like to share and mm. something i'm really interested in. like for example we were driving um i was driving into ikeja sorry mm-hmm. i was driving from ikeja to ikoi and i saw a concrete cast of a hair rag and i was like oh my god that's amazing like said, this, is she, this is in nigeria this is in nigeria and posted that and that's right. probably the quickest I've posted in about a year. Okay. You know? Yeah, Stories, yeah. constant, constant conversation. Yeah, I think a lot of people are moving to that. Yeah. I think stories, You, it feels how Instagram used to feel, more like, just dash it out. Yeah. Whereas posting on your feed has become a lot more laboured and got yeah. to think about this yeah. and think of the times if you're try, trying to gain more of an audience. Yeah. So it's, it's less throwaway than it used to be. I feel like the feed is the the, the kind of portfolio mm. and the stories is like WhatsApp, like the conversation yeah. behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. BTS behind your, yeah, like, yeah. your life, whatever. But even that, I mean, even from that, you still can't, um, you still can't judge or like get a person's life still. Oh God, no, because they're showing you a tiny percentage. Yeah, but it, it's so, it's so constant. You think you know a person, you know? Yeah, you do. You but think that is, yeah, but um, it's just another form. It's not, it's just another language. Mm. It's another language. Snapchat, another language. Do you use Snapchat? Nope. I've ne- I never, ever got Snapchat. I feel like I'm, st- I, I don't know what I use it for, but I'm, I'm still there. You like it? Yeah. It feels like a <laughs> I've a never touched account. it once. Interesting. My sisters are on it. I know a lot of people are I'm so I don't need another one. Yeah. I yeah. just don't. I'm yeah. I'm still into Tumblr. I love like, Tumblr. Even though they've it's full of ads and stuff, but I've always yeah. been more of a tum I've always been more of the visual type, sharing things that inspire me rather than sharing myself. Yeah. And I feel like Snapchat is more about showing yourself like what you're doing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really want to know about how young Joy went from being Joy present day working in hair. So you you were telling me a little bit about how you used to just make things for yourself from a young age? Yeah, I was a DIY kid. Um, I just really wanted to know how to make and, and do everything, apart mm-hmm. from cook, lol. Okay. Apart from eat for myself. Um, <laughs> I was uh, I was really interested in like craft from a really young age. I would learn how to crochet dresses for my dolls. Um, I wanted to know how to make songs. <laughs> okay. That was very short lived. My sister was like, <laughs> I was short lived. I really wanted to like learn, and and hair was only in the uh, like subject to that. So okay. 
So just one more thing for you one to, more learn. Thing for me to right. learn. I wanted to learn how to make my own, do my own hair. Okay. Like if I could control the way I look, if I could control the way I did a braid, if I could control the way I cornrowed, okay. I was like, I felt like I'd made knitted a blanket, you know? Okay. Like I felt like it was it was a huge plus for me. Mm. Um, I was knitting at the time as well. I was um, subscribed to this dollhouse like program. So they will send me like bits every month and mm. there would be like another component to a house that I was building. Okay. My, you know, so... Um, which is ironic because I let, let went on to study like architecture and interior mm. design. And you're, yeah, you're interested in interiors. Yeah, like exactly. So um, hair was just one of those things that I really wanted to learn. And obviously, if it's to do with your identity and your image, you're, you're probably going to obsess over it mm. for like, mm-hmm. you know, the rest of your life. Yeah. So that's one thing I'm so happy I learned at a young age. I learned how and to And you're braid. completely self-taught, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm self-taught. I learned how to braid when I was like, I want to say when I was 10, 11. Oh, wow. Um, and I would practice on my friends mm-hmm. in in um the playground. Mm-hmm. They had like a bench. Sometimes they'd give me money, sometimes they weren't. Okay. Most of the times they would not give me money. It wasn't about <laughs> the money. Yeah, it yeah. It was about yeah. me practicing, learning right. how to braid so that okay. in the future I could make money. Yeah. <laughs> I, you really were thinking along that line. <laughs> I was like, I wanted to make money. Like I wanted mm. to make money as well. Um so um but I didn't. I so and then my my auntie got me a doll's head. I was practicing on that and mm-hmm. then I learned how to like add extensions to the doll's head. Oh wow. And when I got to secondary school, I stopped because I completely forgot about it. I was just like, okay, I'm pretty decent at doing hair. I used to wear the same hairstyle every day. In mm-hmm. fact, I was wearing like these Mickey Minnie Mouse like Oh the little puffs. puffs. Yeah, yeah. Um, it wasn't, I wasn't into like extensions, doing singles. Actually, my mom didn't like us wearing singles cause mm. she didn't like the fact that it made us feel and look older than we actually right. were. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so she wanted you to stay she, with your puffs. Yeah. She wanted us to stay like youthful, mm-hmm. which I'm, I'm thankful for, but mm-hmm. then I, my, all my images, I really can't share them because I literally have kids puffed. To yeah. Like, I'm like, 16, I would love to see, <laughs> you know, at 16 till I was like 16. Okay. I was wearing like mini puffs. That's cute. <laughs> really, really cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wasn't experimental with hair until I went to college. Okay. Um, and what were you studying there? I was college. I was doing like I was A levels. I was doing um, right. art, maths, physics, and English lit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you did you start doing hair again? Like yeah, on the side. I, yeah, because um, um, college there was no uniform, so you either express yourself through mm. hair, makeup, or your clothes. Mm-hmm didn't have a lot of clothes to go by. Like, not that I didn't mm. have clothes, like I had clothes, but I mm. wasn't expressive in my clothes as I was yeah, with yeah, my hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll try the singles, I'll try the cornrows, I'll try, you know, wrapping premium too. I'll try like, you know, perming my hair, doing, using rollers. Like, oh, gosh. Um, I used to be on this amazing, there was this amazing um, website called Black, uh, Black Girl Long Hair. Um, oh gosh, yeah. And there was a couple of other like naturality and um, all these American like mm. um, websites, and they would mm. have these um, chat rooms, chat boards, and it would have you have girls there trying out different um, products. Like mm. there was Lotto Body that was really good for like mm. setting your hair. Mm-hmm. I'd go to like packs and I'd run and get these rollers and like these bendy rollers and try to test them out on myself. I got myself a perm because I was like, okay, probably it'll look better with a perm. So I literally would perm my hair so I could use roller. And for a while, like, my hair was looking really great. And then I was mm. like, no, I'm tired of this. Let me grow it out. Um, cut my hair off into, like, um, a Grace Jones kind of style. Really? Yeah, I had a Grace Jones hair. Um, and then grew it out a bit. And then it wasn't until about maybe... I feel like for the past three years, I've been changing my hair, like, probably every every month, couple of weeks. Because mm-hmm. I get bored of one style. And yeah, that. yeah. Like, and you're, so, you're able to just change it up. You th- I think, yeah, I am, I am able, but I also, um, I feel like this, this, you, you're constantly learning, you're constantly learning, and the DIY, I've had the DIY kick recently, because, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, when you're making wigs, I feel like some, making wigs and crocheting, mm-hmm. like your hair, is it's almost like knitting, mm-hmm. it's like seamstressing, mm-hmm. and it reminds me of, like, even the blanket stitch, the blanket stitch that you use to, like, you know, hem a trouser, like, okay. you know, close a seam, it's yeah. the same stitch you'd use to, like, you know, put the track on the net when you're when you're weaving okay. so there's something quite therapeutic about i can imagine the practices, yeah like the practices blending kind of like merging over each other mm-hmm. um when i wanted to do a ponytail i'm wearing a pony oh you can see um, if you can't see i'm wearing a ponytail <laughs> right now <laughs> <laughs> um i was like i want a ponytail but the hair that i wanted to use is on a wig so i was like i don't want to take off the wig i've got like literally 20 minutes to get ready so i cut the wig in half 
and I almost and I kind of like and I hemmed it oh, wow. over and then put it on my hair. Yeah. Because I was like, I can't want to wrap this around my. Brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue. So I feel like the DIY aspect comes in quite a lot when mm. I'm when I'm trying out new things. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm not as extreme when it comes to styles. I just like simple quick solutions right in hindsight i'm quite lazy so i would like to get a style done fast without you know the amount of work right apparently that's an attribute of being a leo but i don't know oh right okay Um, quick yeah finding quicker ways to do long tasks okay Mm -hmm. so when it comes to your professional life what kind of styles are you most often asked for like do you do a lot of fashion week stuff are you doing session styling do you know what's funny i haven't done a lot of i haven't i haven't haven't been active for a while right I haven't been active for a while, and I think is that because you've been traveling? I guess it's the travel, and I think it was because I, I remember I reached one. I reached the point where I mean, I was I can't remember whose hair I was doing. I can't remember what shoe I was on, and mm-hmm. I was like, I really can't do this for the rest of my life. Like I can't, really? I can't be. Yeah, I, I mean, I would love, I love it, but mm-hmm. I can't be. I, I, I generally don't feel. What's the word? Um, I don't feel valued. Really? What in yeah. the industry? Or? Yeah, no, no, not in the industry. But like, I feel like as a glam, like you don't necessarily have, always have a creative say. Mm-hmm. No, you're you just know? there to do there to somebody do... else's vision, right? They want a ponytail, you give them a ponytail. If the if the if the mood board's about you know bobs mm. and wigs, you give them a bob and a wig. Right. Like you probably have a say on how you you like to go about doing the doing mm. the work. But you don't have a say on the stance that you can actually do. Okay. And some people may argue that you do, but I feel like I would love to have complete like like i was complete saying when, control. I, when i'm doing my hair i want to I, I learned how to do my hair because i wanted complete control mm, of how it mm. looked and so i would like the same if i'm doing you okay. know, work on set. and i also like the idea that my work is informed by something other than just hair so i think that's where because i reached so i went back into do my masters mm-hmm. at the rca mm-hmm. and um i like the idea that okay I'm looking at vernacular forms of architectural, like, you know, buildings that mm-hmm. are maybe influenced by arts and craft. Mm-hmm. So we're looking at William Morris or we're looking mm-hmm. at um, Charles Rennie Macintosh mm-hmm. and then trying to seam that back into how I do okay, hair. How you do you hair. know, okay. so I love that something else could inform my work as mm-hmm. well. And the, it's interesting that the process collages that I would do for conceptual, um, my conceptual ideas my ideas in the conceptual stages mm. at uni mm-hmm. was almost how I approached hairstyles right. when I was, you know, on set trying to come up with ways of what mm. I could do as well. Mm. And I think the collages itself are art pieces, you know, because they're like my thought process. They're, okay. They're me trying to combine two worlds into one practice. And if it may not function in reality, it, mm. the thought the thought process kind of swells in that, in yeah. that state, which is a 2D piece of paper. So um, do you share these collages? I'm trying to think if I've seen them. So I I haven't shared it on. So I had an ex. So um, there's this ex. There's this um, I want to call it an art festival, art exhibition mm-hmm. um, that happens in Nigeria. It's called Artex Lagos. Okay. And so they they showed some of my work. Well, Frida approached me. Frida's an amazing curator. Okay. Um, and she approached me into like showing some pieces for Artex Live, which oh, happened wow. in November last year. So I think I, when she approached me, I was like, okay, so these could be something bigger than this could be. Something it sounds like it to just, me. It sounds yeah. like it could be really important. So I feel like and that I f- when I when I started doing well, when she gave me that platform, I realized, wow, this could actually be something more than just mm. you doing hair on set mm. and then architecture, um, architectural projects on the side. I feel like because I never necessarily went into, I never worked in an architecture firm, I never mm. worked for an interior designer. I feel like these projects are almost like my my little building. Okay, yeah, you know, yeah. So what do you, like, where do you see it going? If you're saying you're not super keen on being on set, like, have you got a vision for what you want to do so in the future? what I did last week, I feel like I'm, I'm trying not to give myself that much pressure. Right. Because I feel like both worlds are super um, overwhelming. Mm-hmm. But I definitely... So hair and that. architecture. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you can be... I feel like hair is one of those things where unlike makeup like you know you could be so successful doing hair mm. like, i'm sorry i'm not saying that you cannot be successful doing makeup what i'm saying mm. is that like you can have constant you have constant clients for yourself like yeah. coming through you yeah know? someone getting it's groom grooming is super self-sufficient yeah as somebody who's trying to be an entrepreneur it's not hugely unreliable people need mm. people yeah need their if hair you dye. can do hair you can make money totally on different scales like you yeah, can be the yeah. lady like down the street or mm-hmm. the lady you know who's like doing session styling mm-hmm. like you can you the world is your oyster mm-hmm. makeup is harder because i guess people use it for events yeah 
and, yeah, yeah, and certain yeah. occasions. It's yeah. not like, a, a, I mean, hair it's is more of an everyday thing. You know, yeah. it's, it's like getting milk, you know. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to not do your hair. And if you're a barber, wow. Yeah. That's one thing I'm not doing. Oh, really? Do- oh, my God. I you could, I could do that. Buy. I could still do it. Yeah. But I'm like, wow, like, your friend comes, just do a little trim. Mm. Like, if you're in uni, if you're literally on a uni campus and mm-hmm. you know how to barb, business right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Business, social life, done, yeah. tick, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just people coming out and the quickness, the quickness as well, mm-hmm. the efficiency to get uh, your mm. barbering done. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted that was that I've always wanted to barb. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to learn how to do it. I think you should something, do it. Something I think you else. should do it. But um, what I have been doing is I've been turning those collages. So last mm-hmm. week we did a shoot, which I was telling you about, mm-hmm. and we we turned those collages. I, t- I made like photographic representations of what the collages would look like. If the the hair world itself is not like what you're s- sort of thinking is a definite route for you, mm-hmm. is there anyone in the hair world that's inspired you so far? Okay, I'm inspired by. So yesterday we were watching the documentary mm-hmm. on um, Yoji Yamamoto. We were watching the documentary. We were talking about the McQueen. It was a crap documentary. It was a bad documentary. No, it wasn't. A ba- he's not a bad person. No, he's not a bad person. <laughs> but, but the documentary maker, they must have given him. You got six hours of Mr. Yamamoto. It was super quick. It was terrible. There's no storytelling. It was coherent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've he's he's got another one that we should probably watch. Yeah, sure from 1989. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, I'm. I think I'm just interested in people mm. that create work. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. It doesn't have to be hair. It doesn't have to be makeup. Mm. It doesn't have to be. Um, limited to, to the um creative, creative industry. industries yeah like, i'm just really i'm really inspired by by people who create work that that move you mm-hmm. whether it like they connect you to your senses they allow you to feel they mm-hmm. allow you to kind of to talk they allow yeah. you to um not only ex- express something deeper that's on the surface level you mm-hmm. know they allow you to like commit you know, they want you to continue to talk about them, mm-hmm. like later on. Yeah, they want. That's like their legacy. That's like their, their name so goes when I, on. So when I when I think of when I think of people who do that, it's like, you know, um, I think of architects who, mm. like, so for example, there's this amazing architect called Peter Zimsler, mm-hmm. and he. I'm obsessed about his work. He did this and he wrote this amazing book called Atmospheres. Okay. And it's literally him just talking about the elements, like the elements of like material, the elements of like light, like sound, space. And he evokes this into his projects mm. and his work. Mm-hmm. So he creates like amazing bathhouses and Swiss oh, wow. Alps. And so when he's talking about it, you feel it. And when you mm. go into the spaces, it's like his words have become like. Mm. So I'm really like inspired by by people who are not, not in tune with life, but they allow life to like, you know, craft their work. Right. It's no. super like hands-on, it's super like... Yeah, special. yeah. So, it sounds like you, you've you got a lot coming in the future. So I'm, so I'm, I really, people that evoke something more than just, if a product can say more than this is, this, I'm giving you like a lipstick. Yeah. You know, I guess... You want, you want more. I want more, which is probably why when Glossier first came out, I was obsessed because mm. they didn't just give me a biscuit. Sorry, a biscuit? Wow. A lipstick. A lipstick. <laughs> they didn't even give me a lipstick. They no, gave me a they gloss. didn't. Yeah. <laughs> a but biscuit. it was, I think you, like, if you ever read into the gloss, you kind of felt like you were part of the brand already. Didn't anything want into the gloss. Oh, really? But it's because someone, because, you know, they're so, the, cons- the peer-to-peer consumer like, recommendation, somebody was sold. And then they they didn't necessarily sell it to me. They spoke about it like it was their own. Like yeah, they yeah, it, like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. They dropped on. Yeah. They picked up from the floor. Oh my god! It's like a lip gloss that you should try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're convinced about something, sorry, mm. I just messed just blue. If you're convinced and you're solely convinced, mm-hmm. then you literally will you will convince me. So the way mm. that Peter mm. Simple was convinced about you know the elements of of water light mm. and air and his space that he created in Swiss Alps if you can convince me that lipstick mm. like this lip gloss kind of saved your life I'm gonna be I'm gonna <laughs> be sold you know? yeah 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 jelly tube ju- juicy tube oh my gosh juicy my tube. friends convinced me about something I'd never really known about mm. and, I, and now I feel like I've had it since I was a teenager but mm. in lies I've had it for like a year yeah <laughs> <laughs> they've been around for a long it's time been around oh my for gosh. such a long time so yeah, I'm. I feel like you can you can sell me anything if mm. you're if you're convinced mm. that it works mm. for you, especially if you're a friend, okay. and especially if 
your words tell a story that's more than mm. I tried this because I yeah, to yeah, this yeah. workshop. What's kind of your first recollection of beauty or grooming being like a part of everyday life? Um, I'm trying to think. Did I have any anyone in my family that I looked up to beauty wise? So you weren't um, following your... My yeah. mum is a very simple woman. Right. Like, she doesn't... Gro- she doesn't need to groom. She has no hair. Right. Like, like she has hair on her head, but she... But she keeps it low. She... she No, but, like, she... um For example, she doesn't wax. Are we talking about, like, even beauty practices? She doesn't wax. She doesn't need to wax. She right. She doesn't have much eyebrows. Oh, she doesn't have to grow. right. Like, her skin was amazing. Yeah. So she could literally go, you know? Right. And I think okay. that's probably why I feel like I don't need you to, want like, that. do anything mm. to myself. Like, I never thought... I looked at my mum and said, she has great like skin. You. I want to be like you. <laughs> Like I was never like I do mm. love you like my mom. She's mm. amazing, but um, I never thought that. But I guess that's why subconsciously I don't you. like trying too much. Like my mom's family, they're like you know they're Hausa. They're from the north in Nigeria, and they're very mm-hmm. were known to be quite simple people. Right. Like especially that her family, they're like they they were like farmers. They used mm-hmm. to like grow ginger and like mm. chick, you know. And so when it comes to self care, they'll probably just wrap their head and and they were um deeper life, which is like a like a part of the christian kind of like oh, right. so they would not wear any jewelry they'd like always wear black long skirts wrap their hair my grandma was like i'm done with this so she stopped she stopped wearing she, she started wearing anything else <laughs> she wanted <laughs> <laughs> and but even then but even after that they still don't wear makeup they've all got really mm. good skin like so um in terms of beauty I think that probably came through TV, magazines. Mm, mm. I was a huge Teen Vogue collector. I used to love right. Teen Vogue. Cosmo Girl. Oh my gosh. I used <laughs> to love Cosmo Girl. And I guess that's why I started Black Girls Love Pink because I never used to see a lot of girls on the, like black girls mm, on the cover. Yeah. And you'd see all their beauty tips like, you should use this. And you should mm. use this. The only thing, I think that's why I love gloss because the only thing I could take from that is the lip gloss yeah. that they were wearing because yeah. I can't match my shade to them mm. I'm really terrible at like eyeshadow palettes you know remember mm. Christmas we used to get those massive eyeshadow and use palettes one. no but they weren't even pigmented you couldn't even use they oh even god it would on just be skin. like nothing yeah. it would literally be nothing yeah. and and I remember like I used to take my lip gloss I like, put it in my little pocket and take it to like primary school <laughs> my sister would steal it and then I'd have, we'd fight and it's like you know so I think <laughs> that's what, why you steal from her now that's why I steal from her now because she <laughs> she she, <laughs> she recently has just gotten into beauty and she's loving it and she's like great she's great at it like she really took time to research she'll like sit down she'll be she's like She's um she has a science scientific background. Okay. So I think she relates to the Kiehl's Kiehl's right. brand because there's you know they have it's the lab coats science. they've got like yeah they've got the skull you know they've got yeah. the skeleton hanging. She's a teacher as well. They've got the skeleton hanging at the back. Yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. Glasses. So she's fascinated so by the she, science. Side. She loves this science side and they've really helped her. She um you know connect with the, with her skin mm. deal some of her skin issues. She mm. uses an amazing cream, but I'm now gonna start using. Which one is it? It's the seaweed moisturizing oh right it's like you literally use like you scoop a, like literally a finger yeah and you put it on your skin and you just feel the height your your skin starts like you oh. feel like it's like you've you've jumped into water i need a new moisturizer it's expensive but it's amazing yeah kills is like no uh, but i think if you're i bought that avocado eye cream that everybody goes on about get the avocado <laughs> get the seaweed um, okay moisturizer i literally used a bit and i was like wow my skin is swimming. Really? It's really, yeah. I don't know where the water comes from, but they bring it out from somewhere. It's like okay. Moses cracking a stone and then there's like water coming out. Like, <laughs> I don't know where the water's coming from, but that water just appears in your skin and I okay. really would recommend it. When I was in, pri- when I was in secondary school, mm-hmm. um, when it, in terms of hair, I looked like a boy. I would like corner my hair all the way back because mm-hmm. I just wanted something simple. I mm-hmm. wasn't at school to like, to, you to know, yeah, look pretty. To look pretty, I was dead yeah. to work, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of the correct, yeah. <laughs> no, because people are in in secondary school to like mess around, and, yeah. I, and like you know, they're not about. They're like, Joy, you're in like year eight. What are you here to work for? Like, no, I've got like you know, got my filing together. I've got food tech at like at three pm. <laughs> Do not disturb me. I'm leaving home early because I want to go home on time. Get myself ready for the next day. I was very oh, strategic. Wow. I wish I had the my my mum would even be like, Joy, you remember back in the day when you were so organized? Like, <laughs> yes, I remember when I was so organized, and I'm try- I can't get back to it. And I was yeah. really did not care about anything when I was I was like I'm about my work, you know, like mm. I had a job. I was my like, work. That joy, school. that joy would really do well. Where is that joy? Um, <laughs> I had really bad acne. I think I was saying it before. Right, yeah. So um, I would definitely go to. The, I went to the chemist. Mm-hmm. To get some products, I would oh, never go gosh. to Boots mm. and Neutrogena. 
Right. Yeah. Which which colour one was it? The orange one? The, the pink orange one. one. Mm. The yeah. one that was made for acne. Yeah, and it had all the, the, acne spot, guides. the spot yes. treatment as well. Yeah. That bleached my skin. Yeah. Wow. I had like a bleach pot on the side of my head. Wow. I think because my skin, your skin is most sensitive in this area, obviously. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So like I, when I would, and I was getting, I used to get acne like here. So right. I'd like get the... Yeah, you're like, the more I, the more I rub, the, the more you know? the product's going to do. And then my skin would, was obviously dry, so it would get really oily and so yeah. i just keep going back and forth back yeah, and forth yeah. to a point where i would like go home and my mom is not working mm. my skin is all bleached up and she's like because you're just missing so i <laughs> would go to she took me to the gp mm-hmm. and first of all they gave me the salicylic this is the first time i salicylic this is the first time i heard of salicylic 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 you, you got it girl <laughs> that's the first time i ever heard of that that, right. that acid and then mm-hmm. i would research it i think this is what got me into like you know hair as well because Along with, you know, skin, mm. there was, like, people talking about mm. hair. Mm. And um, so I was researching that. I used to, I started putting that on my skin. My skin really started to clear up. Okay. Um, they gave me a pill first, and mm. I wasn't, that wouldn't really work. So I started using their little um, serum. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, my skin started flaring up. So that's probably the first introduction I've had to skin. Mm. Um, mm. And so it's, like, a stressful introduction. It's very stressful, a forceful introduction. Mm. Um, yeah. And then oh, another time was when we were having school pictures taken. Right. And I really wanted a mascara. Like, just, I wanted a mascara because I heard that mascaras make you look beautiful. So I was <laughs> like, I'm going to go get a mascara. Don't know what it Where does. did you hear this from? No, it's like people were like, oh my God, it's like Maybelline, like the yellow one. Oh, <laughs> not the pink one with the green lip. Not the pink one, the yellow one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that colossal or something? Colossal damage or some <laughs> concrete thing. Yeah. And I remember I was in boots and I was obviously looking for something and one of the one of the customer service girls, sales system was like, you know, I'm not trying to enter any help. And I was like, yeah. I didn't go to school in East London, so I don't know where I'm getting this accent from. <laughs> I was in Bread Cross and I walked into Boots and they had this Dior store and I was like, oh, I can never do Dior. Like, you know, oh, it's this, too expensive. Oh, this Dior show mascara. Dior show mascara. And she was like, just come and give me a little try. It's going to make your eyes look amazing. And it... It yeah, really it did. Is a good so she mascara. gave me a sample. She gave me like a couple samples, oh. and I was like the first time like somebody was ever nice to me in a makeup <laughs> store. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I was, I must have been like 15, 16. Mm. And then I had this friend called Isabel. She was really into makeup at such a young age. Like she knew how to do an eyeliner like that. Mm, like, mm. and she took me to. Um, it was like Boots had a really cheap brand in the back. Right. And um, I can't remember. I think, I think it was self-titled. Was it Coincel? Was it oh, natural? It was like a natural collection. Yeah, it was natural collection. Natural I collection, that, yeah. yeah. So she, she introduced me to their... They had like a, a clear brow gel. Mm, yeah. And they had mascara and eyeliner. And she was like, mm. do you get these stuff? You're going to look amazing. And I was like, okay. So I practiced... Like, oh my God. The first time I ever did my... My, my <laughs> eyeliner, Lord, I'm mercy. I was literally, I don't know what I was doing. Mm. Didn't know anything about being, you know, the liner being close to the lash. Didn't know <laughs> anything saying. about like, I just saw it as a pen. You know, I think right, I actually, so you just like draw. I think draw. I, I think I actually used it as a pen at one point. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> to write down my name on paper or something. I think I did. Um, so, yeah. And then... I took my pictures that day, had some gloss. Mm. And then the same day I went to the chemist to get some rollers because I had this mm. really dead, fr- I had a fringe that I really wanted to be straight. So I had that. And then um, I think I straightened my hair. Oh my gosh, I straightened my hair with a, um, I, I found these cordless straighteners. Oh but to power what, the- brawn? No, it was, I think it was brawn. Was it brawn? They were like the first ones that was like cordless. And cordless, you could, but you had to it was like, you like curl your- Yes, Those the gas, gas canister thing, the and they smell. They smell yeah, like gas, yeah, yeah. and I was like, "Mom, it's cordless. It's great." No, <laughs> it's cordless because it had a little gas can. Yeah, gas can. <laughs> Imagine we're using, we're really yeah. What was that doing hair. to the environment? I oh, have God. no idea, but I used that to straighten my fringe every mm. two seconds because <laughs> I wanted it to be dead straight. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, natural. Yeah. And then mm. I think it was probably the best picture I've, I've ever taken. I think. Is it around? Can we yeah, see I can. It? I can show it to you. Please, you're gonna see me with my little puff. It was no longer a mini. Yeah. It was never. It wasn't a mini mouse. Two puff. It was like one puff. One puff, and then one puff fringe. Okay. Like I need to see fringe. it. I need to see it. And then the my I didn't have much hair, but I had a cute fan. Oh gosh, the fan! I never did the fan. That was I after always my did the time. fan. Wow. Where that did was... the fan come from? I don't know. It came from probably I mean, cousin America, like they all do. Mm. Um, but yeah, theirs was done a bit differently. So, were there anyone you mentioned TV? Like, 
Is there anyone from that time that used to influence you, like a specific actress or singer, perhaps? I mean, they influenced me, but I could never do their styles because mm. I wasn't a weed girl. You know, right. I'd fantasize about because my mom never <laughs> let me use premium, premium one, premium two weave packets were like gold. You know, <laughs> my mom wouldn't, and I'd be so jealous of the girls that would always switch up their weaves. Like when they went to school, I'd see them with their oh, hair. Oh wow! All the time. And I was like, it wasn't until I was in college I got to. It wasn't until I was in college that I got to experiment with with weaves and then mm-hmm. I realized that wow my head is actually really big and it's my you head need a probably, lot of packets I need a lot of packets <laughs> and I probably just look better rocking a natural right a natural look or like doing like cornrows and stuff okay um I loved reading about him in that time more than trying out styles okay you know so. you seem like someone that likes to take in I want to take it in yeah and then when I'm ready to do it I'll do it so <laughs> fast forward to <laughs> When you were at you, you did you go to uni after college? Yeah, I did a foundation and then I went to uni. Like, and what yeah. was it? What was the hair beauty situation at that time? Probably non-existent because um, architecture was took up so much of my life that okay. grooming was not a priority. Right. I mean, grooming. I mean, yeah, I kept my grooming. Clean. <laughs> but it was. I wasn't but a beautifying, priority. Beautifying. Beautifying yeah, yeah, was yeah. not a priority. Like it wasn't at all, mm, I, mm. and I say that unless I'd have a presentation, then I'd like mm. run around trying to find something. But work definitely came first in that time. Mm-hmm. So I've had it's it's come in, in weird dosages, mm. um, where I you know I'm I'm only reading about hair, and then I forget mm. about it, let it marinate a bit, and then I go back right. and I see. Oh my god, this is how how much is it, has it mm. grown since I last look at looked at it? Mm. What kind of stars are out now? Mm. Like, who's doing what? Mm. I feel like I've seen a. A huge, because I guess at that time was the natural hair movement, so everybody was like, you know, ditching, yeah. ditching extensions, any, yeah, any yeah, kind of yeah. European look, you know, yeah. wigs, weaves, and I think at that time, I had cut my hair, so I wasn't necessarily concerned about um, any styles. I was only concerned about what my mm. hair looked like at mm. that time. So keeping that cute, clean, proper, mm. feeling my scalp every morning. You know, massaging my scalp with mm-hmm. cute oils, and especially because mm-hmm. everybody was into oils at that time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that's when the share butters came round, and then um, the uh, what else? Castor oils. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Jamaican castor the oils. Black really castor oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of black castor oil. And I think I was even using amla oil at that time. Yeah, I went through a stage of using that because um, you look at the women. That's the one that's is it an Indian brand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see their amazing thick. Long hair, oh you're like, yep, gosh. I'm gonna get hair like, yeah. like that. Amazing shine, like put that in your conditioner, you get mm. amazing shine. Mm. Like if you're doing a blowout, I definitely recommend yeah, putting yeah, some yeah. in your conditioner. Yeah, because boy, the shine is real. Um, and yeah, so I wasn't concerned. I was literally just concerned about tap 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 go. Like tap yeah, go, I need tap, to tap, tap tap. You know, anything that was quick and easy, co wash mm. done. At that mm. time, it was literally just like mixing water in the conditioner and then rinsing yeah. your hair and leaving your house. Yeah, yeah, just um, leaving it. But yeah, like anything quick at that time. Yeah. Because my my, my work was more important than how mm. I looked. I, mm-hmm. Yeah. So fast forward in all the way to like right now. Mm-hmm. When, what does it take for you to like, when do you feel you're most beautiful? Like. In a ponytail. Oh, like, it's about the hair still. I think. Oh, is that your question? <laughs> yes, it's an actual question. No, like, no, okay. When do you feel you're most beautiful? I'll, I'll tell you what most people seem to say. Like, if I had to do a, a graph, mm. most people say fresh out of the shower. No makeup. It's very... Some people say when they've done the full-on glam red lip. So right. it's like, like it's, it's about those lip. times when you're like, yeah, I'm good. I feel like I feel beautiful. I feel beautiful when my skin feels good and I don't have to do much to alter it. Mm. And I have like a nice hairstyle that's simple enough. Like I like I like looking like I took five minutes to get ready. And if I look like that and that it has taken me five minutes to get ready, <laughs> then I am I feel like beautiful. Mm. I don't like being I don't like maintenance. I like like heavy maintenance. Right. Like. I don't like the idea that you, you have to spend... I heard that Gwyneth Paltrow, not that she's in my icon, <laughs> but like I heard that Gwyneth Paltrow literally only gives her glam 15 minutes for her to get ready. And if but it's... that's somebody doing it for her, right? I imagine. You know what, yeah. If, <laughs> someone, if 15 minutes, someone's on hair, someone's on face. Yeah, but do you know, but in the sense she's talking about herself. She's talking about herself and her glam team. 
But right. okay, maybe that's not a good analogy. <laughs> maybe, I'm just, I just want to say like, because they, I guess, okay, maybe this reverts back to, you know, the whole God's Cosmo Girl and Teen Vogue that, you know, styles that made you look good in like five minutes. Mm, mm, and that mm. was the red lip and the mascara. And yeah, like the, the five minute face. Five minute face. Look. The no makeup makeup. And, and there was no, there was no tutorial for me in that world and mm. so the fact that now i found a routine where i can get ready in five minutes and feel great and look great i mm. feel like i'm the most beautiful because i did it without right. you okay and it like, yeah I and it, it hasn't like taken you loads of effort therefore it's not like you've formed a completely new persona totally no. you've just highlighted the things that you like about your face exactly which is what um which is what like you know session stylists do okay um session makeup artists do um and I think once I mastered that for myself, not mm-hmm. saying that I could do this for anybody else, I was like, well, I've, I think I've got it now, mm. you know? I, I mean, my friends, they love, especially growing up, they loved, like, you know, like, taking ages to get ready. And for me, I didn't have the patience. Yeah, and that's three-hour sh- thing, drinks you know? and whatever. And yeah. then, like, you know, still not feeling great about yourself after you've gotten done. And if I'm taking three hours to get ready, I'm going to enjoy the process. Mm. But I don't want it to be mm. stressful. Mm. You know, mm. I want to give myself the option that I can do my makeup in 10 minutes. I can do myself my makeup in one hour and still feel great both mm. ways. Mm. I would love to master getting my, doing my makeup for an hour and feeling great. Mm. I just don't have the blending. C- c- <laughs> <laughs> like I'm really bad at, at, at eyeshadow. And I think that's right. something I'm learning now. Um, I know any, any creamy based eyeshadow mm. I'm good for. Yeah, like yeah. You can still do the tap tap with that. Tap tap with that and then leave. Tap tap set and then go. <laughs> um, so... Yeah. Cool. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a bit of a longer episode, but I really wanted to share this one finally because as you know, if you have listened or watched before, I've been doing a lot of lockdown content and I'm so appreciative of the feedback that I've got on it. Like people have really enjoyed it. People have said it's really cheered them up. I've featured people from South Africa, Milan, all over the place. And we've all been talking about how lockdown's affected us in our daily lives as well as beauty. But I really wanted to share this video with Joy because I just think, you know, her name is Joy and I think it will bring joy. It's a great episode. There's going to be an IGTV special with Joy as well, where I try on wigs for the first time. So be sure to follow me on Instagram. It's Beauty Me Podcast. That's where you can find me. You can also find Joy at Joy Darling in it. And yeah, thanks so much for listening. Let me know in the comments what you think. Feel free to slide into the DMs and let me know who you'd want to see next. If I missed any questions with Joy that you want me to ask her. Because I do talk to her quite often. And um, yeah, I hope you loved it. Thanks again.